right, uh, my name is Curtis Warren. Stephen Van Order. Um, and today we're going to be kind of going over our uh, new model we had at the kind of beginning of last year for the MS3 Pro Mini. So, Steve, I kind of wanted to uh, use this uh, time to kind of discuss kind of what is the MS3 Pro Mini and at least initially, what was it kind of designed for? So, the MS3 Pro Mini is what we were trying to do is take the MS3 Pro and create more of an entry-level unit to the lineup. Um, MS3 Pro Evo has been available for a number of years. And before then, before the Mini came out, if you wanted an MS3 uh, Pro, you, you had to buy an Evo. There, there was no lower level option. So the Mini kind of fills that, that empty space. Uh, it's a big step up from some of our entry level products uh, in terms of capability and functionality and tunability. And that's what we wanted to bring to uh, the customer. It's relatively cheap. Uh, it's very, very capable, uh, even with uh, a 35 pin count. Uh, it, it's a good ECU. Specifically, it was designed to target those smaller displacement engines. So your Honda B, K, F series motors, um, pretty much anything four cylinder or six cylinder if you're you want to do wasted spark. Uh, it's got eight uh, injector outputs and four spark outputs. So you could use this to do in LS or uh, in wasted spark and full sequential fuel or pretty much any old school V8 with a distributor. You can run um, you know, eight sequential injection and a distributor uh, with the mini. And the, left, uh, the spark outputs that are left over um, with modules can actually be used to, to do things like uh, control, boost controllers, you know, relays for fans, things like that, uh, if you want to do so. So with that particular model and everything, um, I'm assuming based off of its name, it's probably a small form factor type piece to basically fit almost anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but also on top of that, does it have uh, any of the kind of the, the common MS3 Pro related items of, is does it have a map sensor in it, any barrow sensors? Uh, what's kind of self-contained in it? What's part of that 35 pin and what's kind of making this thing so compact, but also powerful? Okay, so one of the issues with uh, entry-level products is that by the time you've optioned them out the way that you want them and you buy all the sensors required, um, you're essentially at a pro-level product already. Uh, the pro-level products have a uh, one-bar barometric pressure sensor uh, installed, and that's important, especially if you're doing like hill climb events that kind of thing where you, you know, sometimes you'll start at a thousand feet of elevation and you'll climb a few thousand feet or more during a race. Well, the air, the, the difference in altitude affects the density of the air. It does affect the tune and having that barometric correction for those applications is important. And doesn't that help kind of like a lot of times in a lot of those drag and drive events as well, um, where they're at one track, they may be at one elevation, but then they're going to another track at a totally different elevation? It can, yes. Uh, elevation changes, you know, engine management requirements. So sometimes you'll, you'll need a little more or less spark advance. It, it can change uh, fueling requirements. A lot of people tune speed density uh, and, and having that barometric correction available um, is important in, in those, uh, those applications. It's got a built-in four bar map sensor. So that's one of those things that is really, really nice to have. You, you don't have to purchase a separate map sensor. Uh, your th uh, three bar GM sensors are uh, getting expensive now, uh, especially for a good one. There's a lot of cheap knockoffs out there, uh, unfortunately and they just, they, they tend to have failures uh, and, and they're problematic. And if you're paying $15 for a map sensor, it may not be that accurate. So we use a, a really nice four bar map built in uh, and that's to make things easy on the customer. It's already set up in the software. Uh, we took the 
serial connection is on its own connector. Uh, this way it didn't use up any of the pins in the harness. And so we're able to, to maximize um, usage of those 35 pins. So you got eight injector outputs, four spark outputs, you've got uh, cam and crank, and then you've got three more inputs for speed sensors of some kind. So in other words, you probably could run VVT on a lot of these uh, engines like you talked about on the four cylinder side, a lot of them have VVT on it. So I'm assuming that you should be able to run those cams as well. That is correct. So, you know, say uh, Honda K-Series, right? If it's got dual VVT or really any four cylinder engine with dual VVT, uh, you can get cam and crank on your two usual inputs and then you've got two uh, high frequency inputs that can be used for um, your second cam, uh, your second cam input, and then you've still got two speed inputs if you need them. So you can so, be able to do traction control or things along those lines You too. absolutely can. Okay. Um, now those four injector outputs you're not going to use on a four cylinder. Uh, all four of those can be used for either solenoid control, for your VVT solenoids, boost control, um, turn a relay on and off for a cooling fan, whatever you, you, you need to do there. It's also got you know, four extra analog inputs besides your dedicated sensors um, so that you can get more I.O. in, things like oil pressure, fuel pressure. It's got a flex uh, fuel sensor input. It's, it's really, it's a very capable ECU for the form factor and the price point. Now, since it's MS3 Pro, I'm assuming you have all those, like you brought up with the sensor inputs and everything, you have all those additional safeties that was kind of standard in the MS3 Pro lineup. Yeah, that's, that's what's really nice about starting with a, an MS3 based system is that all the safeties are there. You just have to make sure that you have inputs that are usable for them. So oil pressure safety, uh, fuel pressure safety, AFR safety, uh, you know, those are key. When we get done tuning a car here on the dyno, um, if they're optioned appropriately, we'll go ahead and set those safeties up because we have the information that we need from the dyno. Um, big ones there that I like to use, especially, are going to be oil pressure and fuel pressure safeties. Um, when oil pressure gets low, Everybody kind of, you know, if you're a car guy and you've built a motor yourself oh, before, yeah. <laughs> uh, when oil pressure starts getting low, you, it's, it's almost like a crisis. So shut the motor. I've, I've myself, I've lost a, a number of pushrod Fords to, you know, twisting the old pump drive shaft. And because I like to run high volume oil pumps. I don't run them anymore because I keep, I've, I've, cause I've lost a few engines that way. You know, but if I had oil pressure safety set up at that time, um, or even had the capability, most of these are on, you know, factory computers, and they didn't have that functionality. If, if I'd have been able to shut those motors down, I potentially could have saved them. And it, it could have been a, a, a small rebuild, you know, versus everything's wiped out uh, if that motor keeps running and, and you've, lost, uh, you've lost oil pressure. Because, of course, you know, these engines, the, the oil pump drive shaft's not required to keep them running. You know, especially if you're running an EDIS module, something where you, you have a crank trigger. Um, yeah, it was... Not a fun time. So it sounds like also with uh, going down the, the MS3 Pro lineup and the whole reason why this kind of came out is because this particular lineup is going to keep getting updates. Um, it sat on, it sounds like uh, firmware wise, 1.5.2 for forever, but it sounds like things are making some forward progress in that again. Yeah, I mean, 1.5.2 uh, was a good firmware and, you know, I, I used it for a long time. Um, 160 was the big, was a big change in how firmware was kind of handled. Um, some people have an issue moving to the 16 base firmware from 1.5 because the way dead times are handled is completely different. We have a write up about that and a, a spreadsheet available on the DIY website under the support articles. Once you get past that hurdle, which it's, 
it's not a really that big a deal. If you just use a spreadsheet, it's super easy. 1.6.0 has added a lot of features that people have been asking for. Boost Builder is a big one. Um, in our latest 1.6.1 update, uh, specifically cars that rely on a VR sensor one tooth cam, you know, it's, sometimes it's really hard to get that, that VR sensor for cam sync. Uh, people struggle with that with one tooth because it, it has such a small uh, differential voltage uh, when the RPM is low. We now have a, a, a fix for that. But basically, you know, it'll keep trying to resync until it gets the cam signal uh, so that you can have the car start in wasted spark mode. And as soon as it sees cam, it'll fully sync and go in the full sequential. Uh, we did that mainly for the 4.6 cars um, because customers, you know, they reached out to us and let us know and, and dealers reached out and talked to us about how they were having these cam sync issues. Not all the time. It would happen maybe once every 10 starts. But if you don't notice it while you're, you know, at the track, you're pulling up to the line, uh, you fire up the race car and all of a sudden you've got a cam fault and you have no idea that you have a cam fault. Well, now the car's in wasted spark instead of, uh, it's in wasted spark instead of sequential and batch fire instead of sequential. And it may run a different number down the track or your fueling could be off, or the coils could now not be able to, to keep up because they're firing in wasted spark. Uh, so all those issues uh, kind of went away with that update in 161. But the nice part out of it is, is there's more future updates coming out of it, and this is kind of the, uh, the next uh, growth in regards to this particular product line going down the MS3 Pro Mini segment. Yes, so always, always, always doing updates. So that's, that's the goal is to keep things moving along and, uh, and make sure that we use that feedback that the customers give us. Sounds great. Well, it sounds like we kind of got a nice little overview in regards to the Mini. I hope this really kind of helps people out for understanding what this new small form factor box is and get more people kind of upgrading to the latest and greatest platforms. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you've got anything you want us to cover, uh, anything you'd like to see, please let us know. Like, subscribe. Thank you.